If you're a doctor's office, do you feel overwhelmed? Do you feel like you don't have enough time to take care of the patients that you want? All doctor's offices around the nation feel that way. But did you know that home health is actually there to help you, not to cause more stress? There are actually three ways. In this video, we're gonna talk about the three ways that home health was actually built and made to help support you as a doctor's office. If you are a doctor, nurse practitioner, office manager, whatever you're doing, home health is there to help you. Let's talk about it. All right, so there are three ways that home health is actually meant to help you as a doctor. Uh, the first one being coordination of care. Second, clinical outcomes. The third, decreasing unnecessary hospital admissions. So we'll break this down real quick. Let's walk through each one specifically and how home health is actually meant to help you. There's other videos that you can watch that'll actually walk you through a quick three minute video on the explanation of home health. You can click on that and you can watch that. But this video here is actually here to help educate you on how home health can help you as a doctor's office. Coordination of care. All right, so you're a doctor. You see the patient maybe at two times a year, maybe at the most, depending on the frequency, and you're giving that patient a list of things to follow up on. Now tell me, how many times do you actually come back and you see the patient for the same thing and they don't follow up on what you told them to do? I mean, I'm, I'm, I do that sometimes. I go see my PCP and I actually don't literally you know, follow up with what he told me to do. And we're all human, right? We sometimes need extra help. We need outside help to help to do what is need, needed to be done. Home health is there. There's specific criteria within home health, but home health is meant to actually help assist with that coordination of care. If there's a new medication change, uh, if there's a, a new uh, diagnosis that the patient needs teaching on, if there's a new wound, if there's PT, if there's therapy that's needed, you as a doctor can only do so much in that office visit. And even with that, the time that you have is sometimes not enough to educate on the whole disease process. That's why home health is there. Home health is there to literally take a look at that primary diagnosis. Of course, there has to be criteria that's met, homebound, skilled need, it's a taxing effort to them, for them to leave the home. So a lot of times you're looking at patients who are a little bit elderly who need home health. Now you've given them the information and home health is there to help execute and make sure that they are empowered to do the things that they need to do, understand the medications, understand the new di disease, uh, disease processes, limit all of those phone calls going back and forth to the office. They have a nurse that's there that's dedicated to them for a certain amount of time, usually 60 days or more. You have a go-to person. It's literally home health is an extension of care, extension of the care of the doctor's office. It's beautiful. I mean, it's, it's meant to be done. Now, not all home health are perfect. Just like you, when you go to Popeye's and you go to Chick-fil-A, there's a difference in care, but they're both giving you chicken, right? So wherever you are in the nation, you got to find the right home health, right? The doctor's office needs also needs to have a relationship with that home health to find one that they like, that they work well with, and it limits a whole bunch of headaches. So that's just one way, coordination of care. Second is clinical outcomes. Here's a big thing is that you as a doctor, you wanna make sure that your patients are getting better. Sometimes you they get better and sometimes they get worse and it's outside of your control, but the ones that you can actually control and help them get better, there's specific tasks and outcomes that you're trying to look at, whether it's they have congestive heart failure, there's things that they could do. Um, making sure they're monitoring their weight, taking their Lasix, taking their medications, um, exercising, making sure they're eating healthy, right? There's things that they could do that can help increase the outcome to make sure that they're getting better. That's where home health comes in. Home health creates interventions for 60 days to help make sure that that patient understands and creates goals for them. So now you as a doctor have a specific goal. The home health has a plan of care that is in line with what the doctor has said. You, the doctor has said in that office visit, and they make basically a goal to be achieved during those 60 days. It's actually really great. It's beautiful if it's done well. And that actually helps increase outcomes for the patient, helps satisfaction. We are an extension of care, and that's how it should be, an extension of care of the services that you provide at the doctor's office. That is how home health is supposed to help you. Lastly is decreasing unnecessary hospital visits. A lot of times, 
patients go to the hospital because they're scared. Maybe shortness of breath, they're not sure, they're maybe not able to get a hold of the doctor. You know, actually they may call at five o'clock, the doctor office closed, right? And there's questions that they have. And a lot of times they just go to the hospital, they just go to the ER and they get admitted. And sometimes they go to the ER and then they get sick or they get admitted and they get worse, right? A lot of unnecessary hospital visits can be literally removed from the equation just by uh, home health and just by having home health assist that patient. A lot of times you'll get a patient who's not sure about something, they'll just pick up the phone and call the nurse and ask them about the specific questions because the nurse has already had a specific plan of care that has been approved by the doctor. And then the nurse carries that out. It basically becomes an extra set of hands in the in the community. The, the doctor has an extra pair of nurses, an extra pair of therapists that are out there in the community to help the patient, to help them understand um, that, hey, these are the things that you're looking at. You actually don't need to go to the hospital. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, there's some things that just have you have to go to the hospital, right? But most of the time, they can be they can be stopped. Those things can be avoided instead of going straight to the hospital. It's beautiful. That's a great way that home health can assist and help doctor's offices. All right, so here's the thing. There's one thing that frustrates all doctors when it comes to home health. All doctors, all doctors. It's orders. It's all the orders that have to be signed. Here's the thing. If you have a great relationship with the home health, you create that relationship, you get to know the administrator, you get to know the director of nursing, that home health should be able to tailor a lot of those things to you and with you to help limit those orders. There may be ways that you want to receive those orders. Maybe you want them faxed. Maybe you want them e-faxed through DocuSign or different portals, digital portals. You can do that as well. Work with the home health and see different ways that they can actually um, send you those orders. Those orders have to be done. There's, let, let's walk through, actually. Let's walk through how orders actually work for a home health. The first order, which is the initial order, that's by the doctor. It's sent out for home health and usually has the disciplines in there that that they are requesting to evaluate. That's the first order. The second order is actually going to be usually the plan of care. So that is a summary of all the things that the home health is going to do after reviewing the progress note, which is the note that the doctor did. And they has to fall within that face to face guideline, that face to face timeline, which is 90 days before the admission or 30 days after the home health admission. So you've got the first order, then you've got the second order, which is the plan of care. Between those orders, there's usually, if PT's order, there's a PT evaluation order that's sent out to be signed. Uh, There's OT evaluation that's sent out to be signed. And then there's orders that's usually done by either the nurse or the PT during that episode of care, if there's any changes or anything that's different within that episode. So you're looking for one patient Usually within 60 days, you're looking at almost possibly less than 10 orders uh, within that 60 days for one patient. Now, if you have a great relationship with the home health and they understand your protocols and know what you want, you can limit a lot of those things and put a lot of those orders within the plan of care. Uh, But a lot of times you're looking at 10 orders or less than 10 orders within that episode, depending on what's going on with the patient. That's a lot of orders, right? But but it has to be done because there has to be oversight of everything that that home health is doing by the doctor, right? And so the doctor has to check off and make sure that all the things that they're doing, but that's a level of trust, right? Because sometimes, and you guys have probably heard and seen in the news, there's a lot of home health that do shady stuff, but that's why it's important that you get to know the home health. You get to know who the administrator is. You get to know who the director of nursing is. It's your, it's an extension of care, and that's how it should be. It should be an extension of care. And so that's why home health can sometimes be frustrating to doctors. Let's get all those orders. Facts, marketer comes in and says, hey, where's the orders? Where's the orders? Where's the orders? Well, yeah, the orders have to be, it's a compliance issue that needs to be addressed by the home health because you have to have those orders. Without those orders, you can't complete the episode. And then without those orders, you can't bill to receive funds to, to actually pay for the care that was rendered to the patient. So all those things are important. Uh, but a lot of times, home health don't take the time to educate you, the doctor, and the doctor's office on why, why orders are important. So, 
let's recap this. So the three areas and the three reasons why home health is actually beneficial to you as a doctor's office. Number one, coordination of care. Number two, clinical outcomes. Number three, decreasing unnecessary hospital admissions. I hope this helps you as a doctor's office, whether you're a doctor, receptionist, office manager, nurse practitioner, PA, LVN, RN. You guys are amazing. You do a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. It's not easy. Uh, but Medicare established home health for a reason. It's post-acute care in the community. It's meant to help be an extension of care for you and that you can rely on them. If it's done well, that's how it should be. So hope this helps you. If you like this video, please, please like and subscribe to this video. And we'll see you guys next time.